Today is round table Sunday, which means that if you're in the hall, you're sitting at a round table with some people, some other people. And if you're at home, either find some family and friends or grab your journal. This is going to be really fun. So what we will be doing at the tables is we will listen to a Bible reading and some discussion of what's happening in the story we hear from the Bible. And then we will ask you a question. And what we want you to do is to select at your table a representative who records your discussion and then reports that to the whole group so we can all hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to all of you as you are thinking about this. Right, and if you're at home, pause the video after the question. Take as long as you need to write down your answers or discuss it with whoever's with you, all right? And then after we've done that, we'll have another reading, another short explanation, and another question. So we'll do this either two or three times. The second time, choose another person so that not just the burden of recording and so on doesn't just fall on one person, all right? So use your circle. And uh, use the Holy Spirit speaking to you yes. to uh, interact with God's Word and with each other. Hello everyone, we have an exciting event coming up, an annual event on February 5. What is it? Uh, we used to call it Congregational Meeting and it's always uh, done once a year. But uh, since the pandemic we haven't done it, so this is the first time we do it again. That's right, and I'm here with two members of our leadership team, Angie and pa Tota. And who else is on our leadership team? Yeah, we have uh, Pa Chandra Badudu, and then Pa John, and Ibu Joy Watada. But unfortunately, they don't come here. They, they were uh, in their ministry this uh, week. Yeah, they're traveling, so yeah. they can't be here with us, all yeah. of those guys. But what do you guys even do as a leadership team? Yeah, maybe. Uh, so, at the leadership team, we make our decision. So, before we, we present it to the congregation, we make our decision first. And after that, we tell the congregation about our decision. And also, we have uh, our our thing to do. Like, I, I also have volunteering at Tanikota with uh, Shibli. And we will update our monthly uh, update uh, on videos. And you can see uh, what what are uh, what is us doing uh, at Anikota. And Patata actually is a lecturer and a dean at one of the universities. Yeah. So if you don't see him on a Sunday, it's because he's traveling, yeah. right? Yes, yes. <laughs> so he's been busy uh, the last six months. So uh, I've still been traveling, but uh, mainly the the job of the uh, leadership team is to oversee all strategic uh, matters in our church such as uh, our ministry, where do our fund uh, go and, and uh, other things. So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's not day-to-day -day operation of the uh, congregation but it's, it's we meet once a month and then we decide things that is really need to be decided uh, urgently. Right and so it's real protection for the ministry team to have a good leadership team who has a heart for ministry, who has a heart for the city, and a heart for the world. So thank you yeah. on behalf of the ministry team to all of the leadership team. Yeah. And don't forget, February the 5th, just stay a little longer before community table and we'll have our congregational meeting and the updates. Yeah. We'll we see will, you then. We will update you about what we have done and what will, will be done in this year and also especially uh, the financial things because this is our, what you call it? Uh, Oversight. You know, I mean, uh, I got out accountability today to you, to all of you, and so you know where our our money or our fund uh, goes and how to be, uh, what you call it, steward them. Steward them. Yeah. Okay. So, so we'll see you. See you then, February the 5th.
All right, good morning, everyone. It's our last Sunday of the month, which is what Sunday? Round table. Round table Sunday. And guess what? Our LT is here today. <laughs> if you're a member of the LT, would you stand up? You met two of them, you met Patota and Angie.
Thank you for being with us. So let's pray together as we start. God, thank you so much that you have put together a body that uh, we have the privilege of being your people in this place. And not only that, that we are your people, but that you are our God. As we think about you today and discuss with each other what it means to have you there before there was even a beginning and you there beyond the end. We thank you. Amen. Amen. So our January theme, as you know, is Jesus the light of the world. I see I forgot to turn on those lights there. Well, anyway, some of the lights are getting a little bit dim, but okay. So last Sunday of the month. Um, the first week of January, Rosemary and I talked about how God brought his light into the world through his son Jesus, right? And the second and third Sundays, we told you our story because we want you to hear how differently God works. Even if you're on the same path with someone, God will work uniquely in your heart. So that was the second and third week. And last week, we talked about God being Jacob, well, actually two men in the dark. Jesus will light in our darkness. God met Jacob at night in the wilderness. And Jesus met Nicodemus at night in a secret place. Both men, meeting God in their darkness, received his rescue and his salvation. So today, Roundtable Sunday, you'll have opportunity for thought and discussion. And in Revelation, God is announced saying this, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. So what we want to explore today is what does it mean for us personally, that God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, but he's also the middle, right, who is, was, and is to come. The story that comes between, you know how all stories start, once upon a time, and then the end, or what happens between. So, we have two readings for Genesis 1. We've read this several times in the last few years. Let's read it again. Who's reading Genesis 1 for us? Okay. Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth didn't have any shape, and it was empty. Darkness was over the surface of the ocean. At that time, the, God, the ocean covered the earth. The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good. He separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. He called the darkness night. There was evening, and there was morning. It was day one. God said, let there be a huge space between the waters. Let it separate water from water. And that's exactly what happened. God made the huge space between the waters. He separated the water that was under the space from the water that was above it. God called the huge space sky. There was evening, and there was morning. It was day two. God said, let there be let the water under the sky be gathered into one place. Let the dry ground appear. And that's exactly what happened. God called the dry ground land. He called the waters that were gathered together oceans. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce plants. Let them bear their own seeds. And let there be trees on the land that bear fruit with seeds in it. Let each kind of plant or tree have its own kind of seeds. And that's exactly what happened. The land produced plants. Each kind of plant had its own kind of seeds. The land produced trees that bore fruit with seeds in it. Each kind of tree had its own kind of seeds. 
God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, it was day three. God said, let there be lights in the huge space of the sky, let them separate the day from the night, let them serve as signs to mark off the seasons and the days and the years, let them serve as lights in the huge space of the sky to give light on earth. And that's exactly what happened. God made two great lights. He made the larger light to rule over the day. He made the smaller light to rule over the night. He also made the stars. God put the lights in the huge space of the sky to keep light on the earth. He put them there to rule over the day and the night. He put them there to separate light from the darkness. God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning. It was day four. God said, Let the waters be filled with living things. Let birds fly above the earth across the huge space of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the ocean. He created every living and moving thing that fills the waters. He created all kinds of them. He created every kind of bird that flies, and God saw that it was good. God blessed them. He said, have little ones and increase your numbers. Fill the water in the oceans. Let there be more and more birds on the earth. There was evening and there was morning. It was Genesis 2, God said, Let the land rise creatures and move along the ground. And God saw it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our likeness. Let them rule over the fish in the waters and the birds of the air. Let them rule over the livestock and over the whole earth. Let them rule over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own likeness. He created him in the likeness of God. He created them as male and female. God blessed them. He said to them, have children and increase your numbers. Fill the earth and bring it under your control. Rule over the fish in the waters and the birds of the air. Rule over every living creatures that moves on the ground. Then God said, I am giving you every plant of the face of the whole earth that bears its own seeds. I am giving you every tree that has fruit with seeds in it. All of them will be given to you for food. I am giving every green plant to all of the land animals and the birds of the air for food. I am also giving the plants to all of the creatures that move on the ground. I am giving them to every living thing that breathes. And that's exactly what happened. God saw everything he had made and it was very good. There was evening and there was morning. It was day six. Thus the heaven and the earth were completed in all their fast array. By the seventh day, God has finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. This is the accounts of the heavens and earth when they were created. When the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Wow, can you imagine when God finished and all those little wiggling things in the ocean and on the land? He must have gone like, man, this is fun. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when you create something, isn't it just wonderful? You just revel in it. You go like, oh, I like this. Notice there are five days of God saw it was good. And what does God say when humans and mammals and all those are created? It was good. Very good. So you're very good in God's creation. Yeah, absolutely. 
So did you notice in these first chapters of Scripture that God exists before everything else? When he starts his work of creating the place, and then he fills that place with good things, one of the first things he does is he makes light. And these light bearers that we know are sources of light, the sun, the moon, and the stars, but they're created on the fourth day, the light is created on the first day. We read in 1 John 1, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. God does not need light. We do. Without it, we can't see. But God is himself the source of light. We see everything that exists because of his light. And as humans, we are made in his image, as Rosemary remarked, very good. <laughs> we are, you are pretty good. Maybe better than that. Very good. <laughs> um, humans have tried to turn this around and we've made fake gods in the image of humans and other life forms. We were made for more, much, much more. And in fact, we were made to worship the real God, to see the truth. And C.S. Lewis says something, and we'll put that up on the screen. He says, I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen. Not only because I see it, but because by it I see everything else. This is the wonderful thing for us as believers. That God has enabled us to see things the way he sees them. It's a different reality. Very, very cool. As we get to know God, we get to see everything, as Waldemar said, the way God sees it. In John's good news story about Jesus, he writes, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Hey, is there a slide for that? No? Okay. Well, if the light is in God, have you experienced that light for yourself? Think about a time when everything may have seemed or even now seems dark around you, when you don't know where to go or what to do. Maybe it's an impossible situation, a problem that you think cannot be solved. If you belong to Jesus, he's able to make his light shine around you. But do you depend on God to be the light? Do you come to him and ask for his help and ask him to shine on your path? Or do you accuse God of not caring? Do you say, where are you? Why have you abandoned me? If even darkness is light to God, you can be sure that he sees where you are and he sees everything that lies ahead. Nothing is too hard for him. So think again of a difficult time and why you respond to hard times the way you do. If we believe God is light, it matters that he can see everything. It matters that he is willing to shine on my path, on your path. We're going to ask two questions today. And here's the first question. And remember again, you'll choose one person at your table. We'll record this and report it. We're going to ask you to just report one quest, uh, one answer, okay? Because sometimes we get like five or six answers from each table, and then the later tables say, ah, oh, they took all of our answers, and so on. So, so give your most, what you think is your stand-up answer, okay? So here's the question. God is light. Why is it important for us to see what truly and really exists in his light rather than with our limited understanding. And I'm going to set my timer here, and at the end, you're going to hear this, and that's when we're going to find out what you discussed at your table, okay?
Go. You got five minutes. <laughs>
discuss, <laughs> but it is not. So, where are we? This, this is what we ask of each table, okay? Can I have your attention, Simon? <laughs> 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 yeah, you guys are all watching in case I call your name, right, Angela? <laughs> yeah, okay. So, I want you to listen carefully to what other people have heard from the Holy Spirit, okay? So don't be talking while they're telling you. Okay, we'll start with the Yeah, but, but let's listen to what we've heard this morning. Hey, good morning, everyone. It is a privilege to, to speak on behalf of my team. Okay, so the question is, God is my
No. It's okay. I have peace, I have joy, because my father is in Jesus. But other siblings, they are sorrow. And then they are I know that if physically we cannot see him anymore, so then I'm sad, actually I'm missing him. But I have more joy than missing him. So that is only spiritual difference because of the Christian Christian, we see the light of Jesus. Amen. Another great sermon right there. Okay, who is the spokesperson here? Hello. <laughs> okay, so we talked about within our limited understanding, God is unlimited. And that shows our dependence on Him to reveal the things that we're unable to see. And if we don't see things in God's light, we tend to see the negative or the bad. But in God's light, we can see the beauty. We can have joy, and then we can have a hope in that. All right. And how about here, please? All right, good stuff. Um, three points. Oh, <laughs> 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 You tried. It's all good to bed. Okay, so um, now the cause our uh, understanding is limited. And so it is important for us to see from the perspective of God, who can see way beyond what our uh, limited understanding can, can see or can understand. And also that obviously will lead to all, um, will lead to the fact that uh, our world is in a dark place. We live in a dark world, obviously. And so once He is the light, then it's important that I will see from the perspective of the light. Otherwise, we we not be darkness. Good job. Good job. <laughs> okay, who is it here? So according to us, it's just simple, to the point. Because God is the source of everything, like the truth with wisdom and everything. Okay, good. Short and to the point. So our table actually focuses more on the Bible itself. So it, this covers more of the limited understanding that we have. So as Christians, we think that the Bible is the instructions. And this reminds me of a few years ago that I heard that the Bible was actually short for basic instructions before leaving Earth. <laughs> and so,
Why is it? <laughs> but I think the most important God is life and I think what we're talking about life is talking about the Bible because let's speak describe what God at all. And if we're talking about God is life and why we not trust our limited understanding because we're not about no idea. We know the beginning and the end and the Bible said he is the beginning and the end and he knows everything. So that's the reason we need to trust him. So, God says, as we heard, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And these are the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet. We get the word alphabet from Greek. So we had the first chapter in a little bit, and now? We're going to hear, read for us, the last chapter and so of, well, the second last chapter and a bit of the very last chapter of Scripture. So who are our New Testament readers? Okay. Revelation chapter 21. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth were completely gone. There was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem. It was coming down out of heaven from God. It was prepared like a bride, beautifully dressed for, his hus for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne and say, Now God makes his home with people. He will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or sadness. There will be no more crying or pain. Things are no longer the way they used to be. He who was sitting on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down. You can trust these words. They are true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. I am the beginning and the end. Anyone who is thirsty may drink from the spring of the water of life. It doesn't cost anything. Anyone who overcomes will receive all this from me. I will be his God and he will be my child. One of the seven angels who had the seven bones come and spoke to me. Bones were filled with the seven last plague. The angel said, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Then he carried me away in a vision. The Spirit took me to a huge high mountain. He showed me Jerusalem, the holy city. It was coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God. It gleamed like a very valuable jewel. It was like a jasper, as clear as crystal. The city had a huge high wall with twelve gates. Twelve angels were at the gates, one at each of them. On the gates were written on the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east and three on the north. There were three gates on the south and three on the west. The wall of the city had twelve foundations. Written on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked with me had a gold measuring rod. He used it to measure the city, its gates, and its wall. The city was laid out of a square, out like a square. It was as long as it was wide. The angel measured the city with the rod. It was 1,400 miles long. It was as wide as high as it was long. He measured the wall of the city. It was 200 feet thick. The angel did the measuring as a man would. The wall was made out of jasper. The city was made out of pure gold, as pure as glass. 
The foundation of the city walls were decorated with every kind of jewels. The twelve gates were made from twelve pearls. Each gate was made out of a single pearl. The main street of the city was made out pure gold, as clear as glass. I don't see a temple in the city. This was because the Lamb and the Lord God who rules over all are its temple. The city does not need the sun or moon to shine on it. God's glory in it, it is light, is its light, and the Lamb is its Lamb. The nations will walk by the light on the city of the city. The king of the world will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut because there will be no right there. There will be no night there. So, the glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Only what is pure will enter it. No one who fools others or does shameful things will enter it. Only those whose name are written in the Lamb's Book of Life will enter the city. Then the angels showed me the river of the water of life. It was clear as crystal. It flowed from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the middle of the city's main street. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit. Its fruit was ripe every month. The leaves of the tree bring healing to the nation. There will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb, the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city. God's servants will serve him. They will see his face. His name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. The Lord God will give them light. They will rule forever and ever. The angel said to me, You can trust this word. They are true. The Lord is the God of the spirits of the prophet. He sent his angel to show those who serve him the things that must soon take place. This is the word of the Lord. Wow. What a story. We hope that the future is filling you with joy rather than fear. Did you hear how things will be wrapped up? We will return to a good and beautiful creation. One with no pain, suffering, death, our tears are wiped away. All the reasons that we cry or despair, they're gone. You hear how this part of life ends? God is the light of the eternal city with no need for sun or moon. So amazing. I used to read in Genesis 1 and think, how could there be plants with no sun and moon? You know, my little science brain was. But in the end, there are trees, and God himself is the light just as he was the light in the beginning. You know, the sun and the moon are created things. And I've got a picture here of the actual surface of the sun. Pretty amazing. If you think of how many, basically, hydrogen bombs are going off there every second, and it keeps on shining and giving us light, yes, that's magnificent. Yes, it's incredible. It's vital to light. But you know what? God made it just by speaking it into existence. It's a sign. He rules over that just as they rule over the day and the night. 
In the beginning, God walked with the first humans every evening. <laughs> when they sinned and chose their own way, they became afraid. They hid from God. <laughs> Remember we showed you the picture of the raccoon hiding it? That's about how effective it is when we hide from God. They chose darkness. They chose their own way rather than his. Have you ever done that? <laughs> oh, yes, you to put up your hands. Well, much later when Israel is rescued from slavery, God goes ahead of them with them. And we talked about that earlier this month. Um, do you remember he lights their pack, he shades them in the day with a pillar of cloud, right? He's remember here in the wilderness in the desert. So he gives them shade from too much light. But what happens at night? They have a pillar of When Moses goes up Mount Sinai to meet with God on behalf of the people, he comes down, his face shines. Somebody mentioned we are a reflection of God's glory. His face shines with God's glory. The people can't even bear to see that reflection shining through Moses. He has to put a veil over his face to be among the people. And we just heard read to us these last chapters of Scripture. God himself will be with us again. I know we talk about going to heaven, but the truth is much cooler. God is going to come and live among his people. That's what he intended from the beginning, and we return to that. So he himself will be our light. I want you to imagine the light of that city. The light coming from God himself. What will that be like? The sun warms us. And at noon, it can be so hot that it burns our skin, especially if your skin is bad tropical skin like ours. <laughs> All right? It can burn us. What would it be like to have new bodies that can bear to be in the light of God's presence in the holy city of the New Jerusalem? How do you feel when you think about that? Think about why do you feel when you think of being in the presence of God? Are you looking forward to being with God forever? So, time for the second question. The first question we looked at was uh, how God was light before there. he made the moon and the stars and the sun and so on. We asked you to consider how God made ways for you to see, to experience things, to know the world the way he does. Our second question looks forward to the future. The new city is where God will walk with us and be our eternal life. What do you most look forward to? What are you most looking forward to in that new city, living the light of God's presence? That's your question. Choose what are person. you most looking forward to in God's presence?
people are happy that um, they will assume a new body, so there will be no, no going to the gym, <laughs> no study. <laughs> There will be no sadness, no tears, no sickness. There will be no death and uh, there will be eternal life. We are also looking forward to uh, being in the presence of God and seeing His face. And then uh, meeting friends and loved ones that have already gone ahead to be with the Lord. And also uh, other Bible characters like Paul and uh, Moses and no one and stuff like that. And then no rent. <laughs> so I hope you're getting more and more eager to get there. I mean, I, I don't want to die right now, but it sounds like it will be fun. Well, um, we'll, we'll serve the Lord. Uh, easier than before. <laughs> uh, life without like God has said, sadness, problems, suffering, but only joy. Um, enjoying God and, and seeing Him delighting in us as well. Um, peace, so no worrying about anything else. And just having a good body. <laughs> okay. And lots of barbecue, right? Exactly. <laughs> okay, who is this one's person? Um, there are uh, many uh, um, words uh, uh, in reflecting the uh, longing to be there. Uh, on my right side, the Hebrew says that what is just looking forward is to be with him, uh, to be with him, to be with Jesus, his Savior. Uh, the brother on my left said that peace. Looking forward. Uh, and uh, Keha, no more auto disease. <laughs> 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 oh, it is okay, but uh, there is yeah, there, there will be no more uh, suffering. Okay, yeah. And um, uh, Maria here mentioned uh, joy. And yeah, the last, uh, she said that there will be no more uh, earthly living. Okay, so I think we are cheating a fair bit here. There's more than one answer. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, who is the spokesperson here? All right. I'll try to summarize. <laughs> I, I volunteered for the report because I thought it would be easy to record this one, but the recording was easy. It's giving one answer, sorry. Um, I think I think what summarizes it all for our table is complete joy um, to be with the Father, and, and it'd be a joy that we've never experienced. We'd be amazed and overwhelmed by it. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Together, and we're going to be 
It's a lot of work for nothing. God knows it all. He loves you and he invites you to step into the safety of his light. He invites you to let him heal your wounds and let you let him guide you on your path. So let's pray together, God. Thank you so much that you are light. That in you there's no darkness at all. There's no change, no shadow, no shifting. You are consistently you and you invite us to come into your life to be with you. For anybody who doesn't yet know you or, or as people were talking about what they look forward to, they may have thought, no, I'm, I'm actually a little bit afraid. Help us, each of us, to make that choice to admit, to believe, and then commit to following you and being with you. And for those of us who may have known you for a long time, but we're kind of getting cool to all of this, and it, it wasn't like a burning fire in us. Rekindle that fire. Let your light shine into my heart, into our hearts, and let us desire to be your light in this world, your salt in this world, to reflect you and to know what it's like to walk with you every, every day together. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We have, um, if you agree with that, would you just stretch your hands out and just say, God, here I am in your presence. That's me. I want your light in my heart, my family, my workplace. Just stretch your hands. So just experience the presence of God who loves you so much. God, we just come to you this morning. Just lift your voice up to him, would you? So it's our privilege to be communion together. And uh, we, if you've got some extras at your table, share them with the tables that don't have quite enough. I think. I think most of us. Reset? Okay. I'm going to steal the. Well, I'm not going to steal it because that would be a question. I'm going to put these to you. Is there somebody who still needs one? Put your hands up and Alice is coming around, okay? And we'll just we'll just pause a moment. Yeah. And just let her do that. You know. We need one. When we get to the end, it's going to be the biggest party this universe has ever known. It's the wedding feast of the Lamb. When Jesus had the Last Supper with his disciples, he said, I'm not going to be drinking of the wine any longer until I celebrate with you at that feast. Paul. Paul tells us these words. He gives these to us. I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. His body broken Broke for, for us.
For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. His blood shed for us. Thank you for the healing of that broken body. And that we can look forward to a time with no pain, no suffering. Thank you for the forgiveness in that shed blood. That we can be reconciled to you, to the Father, to each other. Thank you for what you suffered for us and what you won for us. Thank you, Jesus. So please stand for the benediction. This is a blessing declared over you as you go into the week. So just reach your hands forward. Just as God's word was sent into the world to heal and redeem, so God sends you into the world this day to be light and love, healing and hope. Go now to be light for this world. And may the grace and peace of God, the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer come upon you this day and remain with you always. We go in peace, to love and serve the Lord in the name.